Welcome everyone to the Learning Tube. This is Ava. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you for joining us live for this training session. Remember that these sessions are recorded and they will be posted in the Facebook group that you see right here. Be sure to join the Learning Tube Facebook group. Deidreon just dropped the link. Drop the link again, Deidreon, for those just joining. Be sure to join the group and post in the group. We love to hear from you and what you're up to with your online ventures. Remember that the replay is also sent out via email and we also have a Learning Tube YouTube channel where the replay is posted as well. So welcome everyone to today's session. Now, I don't know about you, but I am so happy that I am able to utilize all the tools and resources that we have access to nowadays who's that who else is happy for all the tools and resources that we're having there's no excuse no for not being able to find a tool to do what you need it to do right are you happy high five give me a five are you happy for all of the tools and resources that we have at our disposal are you happy i see some hearts going up thumbs up i am very happy but guess what with all of these tools and resources what happens <laughs> We have so many things to choose from and what happens to us in the end, unfortunately, because we have so many choices. What's happening to you? I'm sure this is happening to some of you. You have so many choices that you are possibly becoming overwhelmed with what's available. Overwhelmed. I see Katina say freezing. Karen says overwhelmed. Nilda, overwhelmed and all over the place. You summed it up, right? We're overwhelmed and all over the place. Paralysis is what Crystal is saying. And we're all suffering from these things. Denise is saying overwhelmed as well. But guess what? We're all in this together. And there's some strategies that we're going to share with you today that hopefully some of these strategies can help you to avoid some of the overwhelm that comes with having too much available. There's so many things out there. And these strategies, I'm sure some of you are implementing them. Some of them you may not have thought of to do. They're quite simple. You know that sometimes when you hear things that you already know, it just further reiterates that, you know what, this is what I need to do in order not to feel so overwhelmed when I have access to so many different things. So we're going to be looking on AI tool directories because it's all about AI and what persons have done. They have created so many different AI tools that are out there for varying tasks that you need to perform. And we're going to look at how do you go about navigating, discovering, and excelling when you're using these types of websites. So we're going to discover how to effectively navigate and the vast, and let's say vast, landscape of AI tool directories that are out there and finding the perfect solution for your needs without feeling overwhelmed. So are you ready? Give me a one. Are you ready for today's session to talk about all of this? Now I'm going to be showing you five different AI tool directories that we have available here. Five different AI tool directories. And some of them you may know already and some may be new to you. Note that with the internet, there are so many different Things that are out there that we have not exhausted the list by any means, but I'm just introducing some of the more popular AI tool directories that are out there for you. Now, before I go into everything, let's look at some of these. So with the replay, some of these links will be included. I shouldn't say some, all of these links will be included with the replay and I'll also drop them in the chat. So the first one we have here is Futurepedia. One of the popular ones so a lot of you may know about this one but why i want to show you some of the ai tool directories before we look at some of the strategies is that i want to show you that they really do have common elements with them now most of them have some menu options here that either allow you to see all the ai tools they have listed they allow you to see any news that they have to keep you up to date when it comes to AI. So we see that this one here is listing AI tools that it's showing you based on varying categories. So if you know the category of tool that you're interested in, they've laid it out here on the table ready for you. So they have some AI tutorials on this particular website that you can watch and learn about 
some of the AI tools that are out there. So I think that this one definitely is a great one to explore. You see, there, there's so many different things to look at. They also have AI innovations and such. And you see that there's an option to search based on what you're interested in. So let me go back to the home area. So here it says, enter the name of the tool that you want to use or the use case. And you see that there are different categories that you can click on and they have an all categories section. So quite an extensive directory listed right here. So let me drop that link here and you can check out Futurepedia. So let's go to the other ones. I'm gonna show you some of them and then we talk about what are the strategies that you can employ when you're looking on these. So we have Toolify, like why do they always have these Fi and, you know, Toolify.ai. It sounds very simple, but it has a lot of things available here as well. So you see that it too is listing out the categories. And if you're interested in text writing, image, video, voice, business, we see that we have that listed here as well. It also has a section coming soon section called AI for jobs, which you might be interested in. It has a just launch. So if you're interested in what is new with the site, there's a just launch area that just is ready for you to tackle the newly added tools. Here we have another one called top AI tools available as well. So far we've looked at three of them. Anybody know these three so far? No, a lot of people, a lot of you must know about Futurepedia. Let me know in the chat. Give me yes, a why if you know them so far, no, new to you. So with Futurepedia, we saw that it had its menu options. So does the other one. And Top AI also has the menu option. So it has explore all the tools, free tools, which we love to see. It has a GPT list. We talked about GPTs in one of the learning tubes and we shared some GPTs. I, sh I actually share a GPT I created with you. And then it has an all category. So we see that it has a lot of listings here as well. All right, so we see some common things. We see that it has categories you can search through and you can search for new AI tools, newly launched AI tools and such. So I see some people say, no, no, new to you. All right, all right. We love when we're bringing new stuff, right? So all new to some of you so far. And let's look at the next one. We have futuretools.io. Anybody feeling overwhelmed yet? Like futuretools.io. And we see it also too has its different categories you can search to. It has AI news. It has added today and all these different things available to you. So then he's saying, yes, feeling overwhelmed, right? So I, do, I want to show you all the things that's here, you know, so that you can appreciate the strategies for attacking these websites when you're going to look for what you need. And we have another one here. We have open tools. Yeah. Open tools dot AI. <laughs> also uh, shows you it has a newsletter. It has favorites. It has allows you to search as well. It has filters that you can use to pick specific based on what you're going through. And it lists them all here in the right-hand side. And the last one is that we have AI tools directory. So having looked on all of these so far, we realize that all of them have something in common. They do allow you to be able to search for what you're looking for. It has filters and all these things available and ways that, and things that you can use to make things a bit easier for you, all right? So you need to definitely look and see what is out there. So just looking on them in a vacuum, it may seem like, oh my gosh, there's so many things that are available, all right? So Anne-Marie Anne -Marie says, yikes, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yes, you don't know what you don't know. So I see another question, are these tools free? Now we know that with some of these tools, they do have free elements and some have some paid parts as well. So when we talk about some of the strategies, we're gonna see how we sift through all of the tools that are available, all right? So now that I have your attention, we're showing you a lot of these websites that some of you are not even aware of, which is always great. We love to bring you something new. Let's look on how do we go about navigating discovering and obviously we have to excel when we're using these websites to find what we really need the first thing obviously you have to have a goal 
who is going to go on each of these websites in a vacuum with no plan? You're just going in and saying, da, 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 let me see what's out there. Ah, ah, ah. Let me go. Oh my gosh, there's all these things. You have to go in with some sort of game plan. Just like how you plan what you're going to present on if you have a present presentation, if you're a speaker, or if you're going to tackle anything in life. You have to have some sort of goal. You can't just go in blind because that definitely is going to be the first start of overwhelm because you don't know what you're looking for and you're going to see all these goodies. You're a kid in a candy store. We know everybody here loves AI. And they're going to say, oh my gosh, you're going to have shiny object syndromes and you don't know what I'm going to look at. So you have to have a plan, a clear goal. So the first thing you have to do is define your needs. What problems are you trying to solve? What are you trying to solve? and the AI solution you're looking for. So drop in the chat, what problem do you have? What problem do you have and you want an AI tool to solve it? Drop that in the chat. I know a lot of you have some tasks that you want to achieve and you're hoping that there's an AI tool for that. So what problem are you trying to solve? So Cynthia says she's looking for AI tools for special, AI tools specially for autism. So Katina, website design, GG project management, I see uh, MTI, that's what it says as your name, photo framing, Pamela, content creation for e-commerce, uh, Keely, dead end job, mm -hmm. event titles, that is Kenya, Valerie, presentation guide, Want Denise is wanting to be able to create more unusual designs. And we see quite a number of variety here like so many of you are looking for different things susan you want to update your squarespace website so there are a lot of problems that we have that we want ai tools for this so rose you say you want tools to help you redesign a dynamic linkedin website so there are so many problems that we have and there are so many tools that are out there but how can we find them now remember it's going to take a little work Remember, things aren't just here waiting for you to get it done for you. You have to, you know, roll up your sleeves and get dirty down into the website. But we're going to tell you some things that you can do. So once you've understood what your problem is, you need to prioritize your objectives. So based on the importance of what you need done, that's going to help you to make the decision based on what you need. And a lot of us are on a budget. So you want to be able to find a solution that's not going to break the bank. And the great thing is that there are free solutions that are out there to start you off. And of course, they're going to have some paid elements to them. But you have to be prepared to know that there are going to be, there's going to be some investments along the way. And you have to choose which one suits you best. So Deborah, you want to help students to improve their writing and reading skills. So if you've identified your goal, you need to prioritize your needs. You want to definitely choose a tool that is doing what you want. There are certain things you want these tools to have, must have. You're not going to compromise. The tool must have this. But then there are things that if there are design enhancement that the tools have, you and they can have additional features that you're not mad at. So these additional features are only going to make things better for you, improve your experience and the outcomes of the results that you get. And they're nice to have. You have some tools that have some things that maybe you won't even get to use that feature, but it's great to know that the tool is able to do this. So you have to have features that you're not going to compromise on. They're going to have additional features that are going to make your experience better. And of course, nice to have. There are certain features that it's not going to hurt if the tools have those things. Remember, I showed you on the websites that we looked at, those six that, there are certain things on the websites that got, are going to make your life easier. How many of you are actually examining the websites and seeing that they have filters and they have search options? So I kind of pointed them out a bit when I was going through those six, but yes, you do have search filters. So here you want to narrow your search based on a certain category, an industry, a niche, or a use case, depending on what you're looking for. So we see Deborah is looking for writing and reading skill um to improve writing and reading skills so she has a specific area that she's looking for as well and we saw some of the other things that you said rose was talking about redesigning her linkedin site 
and Susan, her Square Space website and such. So, you know, right away, Valerie talking about presentation guide, you do have something specific that you can search for. And that's what you need to start with, searching for what you know you're looking for. And then you have to trial and error, refine your search based on the results that you're getting. So this one here, deployment options, a lot of us are not going to explore this. There are different ways that models that are out there that we're not really concerned how they're doing the task. We just want to make sure that they're able to do it. So this one, most of us are not even going to dive into that area. But where pricing structures are concerned, we want to get free, if best. And you may have subscription based and pay as you go. And you also have an option where you want tools that are able to easily integrate, meaning work together, so you can have some sort of automation if necessary. So most of us are really using industry specialization and pricing structures. Yes, you're looking for a good deal, free if possible. And of course, you want to be able to find something specific for the area that you're interested in. So having said all of that, let's jump back into some of these tools. So let's start with this one here. That is the AI tool directory. That's what they have even named their website. It has the actual AI tool directories as the name. And it says it's the world's best curated list of AI tools. So how would we go about using this particular site? We see that it has a search area right here. You see what it says? Search your AI tool or category. If you know the name of the tool, you can actually click the name part and click on the tool to see it specifically. If you know your category, you can choose your category based on what you're interested in. So we see that, uh, Deborah, you remember you're in interested in improving writing skills for students. So maybe you want to jump into education and see if there's something specific there that you would want. And of course, where price is concerned, most of the websites are going to show you based on free, premium or paid now free is supposed to be fully free but you know they're going to sneak in some things there in the filter that are partially free and not fully and we know freemium that's supposed to be partially free and some parts paid and then paid now obviously you're going to have to take the box out and pay for this one so you can filter your search in order to be able to find specifically what you want but know that the first search is not always going to be what you need. So you have to make sure that you go back and forth. So Valerie was talking about presentation guide. So when you say presentation guide, are you talking about creating presentations like slide presentations? Is that what you're talking about? So Kenya is asking about event titles. So you want specific and specific AI to, tool to be able to name, supply you with names for events that you can use. Let me know if that's what you want. And Pamela, you're talking about content creation for e-commerce. So when you say for e-commerce, specifically for that or just general content creation, because is it that you want content for a particular website and so on? All right, so let me see. So Kenya says, yes, creative names for name ideas. So let's look at that. All right, so creative names for events, All right? So let's type that in and see what it gives us creative names for events so i took that i'm just going to agree to these cookies so you see that specifically it doesn't give me anything for that kind of search so i'm going to take off that and put creative names and see if it gives me something else because you know that you have to refine your search based on what you're looking for all right so it's not doing well with that particular thing so let me see now name suggestions let's see what it does with that it doesn't like those searches where it comes to names and such all right so i'm going to search for content creation and see what this gives us let's see what you give us right, so i typed in content creation and for price i'm going to say free so let's see if it has any free content creation no it doesn't all right so let's take off the free and see what it does as is. So we see it has some productivity, copywriting, text to video, podcasting, copywriting. We see a lot of paid ones here, freemium. So let's try the other site and see what we get from it. Let's try Futurepedia. So Valerie is saying like producing two page guide or basic 
financial literacy. So, okay, so you're looking for actual, the actual guide to be created. All right, so like a step-by-step, -step, let's see, I create step-by-step -step guides. Let's see what it gives us with that. All right, so this is giving us one call scribe and it says transform any process into detailed guides instantly with AI driven. And you see for each one, it gives a description for it. So we can look and see if it's something that we're interested in just by seeing the description itself. This one is called guide, transform documentation with AI driven video creation and sharing. This one is called free, very interesting name, right? No, not free, sorry, create. <laughs> And it's free and it says transform ideas into apps, AI-driven development, intuitive design, and so on. All right, so let's look and see. Anytime you see that it has this icon right here, it allows you to visit the website. So if I click on this, it takes me straight to the website. I'm sure some of you have heard about Scribe. So you see that this particular website is allowing you to create SOPs, build training docs, answer questions, assist customers, and it also has something else and it has onboard hires. So it says, let your document do all the work for you. Turn any process into a step-by-step -step guide instantly. All right, so let me see who that was. Valerie, does that look like something you may be interested in? And you go down and you look more on the particular tool and see, does it have anything that you would be looking for? So you're gonna look at several types of these these kinds of websites around this particular area to see which one suits you best. So where cost is concerned, always jump to the area that says pricing, because remember, even though it may save, some of them may say free, they may have paid elements. So when you check the pricing area now, you're gonna see what it offers you. So for free, you can work with any web app. You have quick customization and there's a shareable link with, and you can also embed it. And you see that there are some options here. Always make sure that you check this part here. This is showing you what the price is if you're going to do it annually, if you're going to pay yearly, but uncheck this if you plan to just pay monthly. Very important. It tricks a lot of people. It's showing you the monthly price, but not the monthly. It's showing you what the price is if you pay for the year itself. All right. So, Nilda, you're saying the training docs looks interesting. So, here we see that it's $15 per month if you're doing a pro team and here you have pro personal. So most of these websites, you wanna look at the the pricing part to see what options it has available for you. So Kenya, you're saying my event will serve the purpose of business owners who are looking for board members. It's a network event. So for this purpose, Kenya, I think that ChatGPT is the best one to be able to go back and forth to give you ideas for what you would want to call this event because they said yeah, you want to have event names. So chat GPT is definitely go to where that is concerned, but we could also go back here. Let me go back and we can look at name generators. Let's see. Name generators and see what comes up. And oh, only one. <laughs> this only has one name generator and says name generator is a friendly tool. Let's see what it says. Name generator is a friendly tool that generates unique and attractive names based on your provided keywords. So let's go to visit the site. So basically this is what you'll be going through and doing for each different thing that you're interested in to see what's going on. So let's put in, let's put in your event. Where, where was the, so you said that my event is a purpose of business owners who are looking for board members. Let's see. Just looking to see what it would what it would actually suggest when it says stay, it says name generator, can quickly generate various names such as okay, it's saying character names and different things. So maybe this isn't the best one for what you want but you could try it so you see here it's talking about the different kinds of names it can generate all these different categories here last name generator shop name generator let's look through a lot of things a lot of different names it can generate let's go through so you know of course when you're going through you'd be diving into your own special category i was just looking on some based on what some people's feedback was obviously 
each decision making is dependent on your school. Uh, so Kelly are saying that you don't think Futurepedia is that good. That's why the, it's great that you have so many choices out there. So many choices out there. So you don't have to be forced to use a particular tool that you don't fancy what it is doing. All right. So what you're going to do now, as we said, you're going to go through, type in what you are looking for specifically. You're going to use the filters and do your search based on that and decide what you're going to be doing. And as I said, you're going to have a variety of the same kind of tool looking on. All right. So when you're doing all of that, you're going to also make sure that you're looking for ratings, feedback, recommendations of persons who have used the particular tool that you're interested in. So the ratings are going to have an overall rating, number of reviews that the tool they're giving it, feedback, recommendations, pay attention to positive and negative. Always look at the negative first. You know, people tend to, with recommendations and reviews, they tend to look at the positive ones. Trust me, you get a better idea of if you're to use a tool or not. When you look at the negative reviews and when you see common negative reviews, you know that, okay, maybe this is not something that I should be trying. So always look at the negative reviews. Don't spend the time looking on all the five stars and stuff. You really get a true impression of what's going on with the negative reviews. And here we have clarification, clarify concerns. So use the reviews to help you decide what to do when it comes to the tool. All right, so we see here with Futurepedia, let's see if it's showing any kind of ratings with the tools. So let's say it's, it has productivity tools. Somebody was talking about image tools. So let's look at all image tools. So there's an image tool section that we can click on. And here it's showing, I'm assuming that these are people who have bookmarked the tool or rated it in some way. They haven't told us what that icon is because it's not a star or anything, but we're going to assume that the more that we have there, it means that people have it. All right. Yeah, we know Mid Journey is a very popular one. Playground AI is very good too. So you can use these numbers here to decide which ones you want to try out. And as I show you, it, there's a freemium and it has free trial and such. So use these guides on the tools to decide which ones you want to do. So let me go back to Toolify. So with Toolify, Toolify gives you most saved. So that icon is the most saved icon. Remember we saw on the other one. So anything that somebody is saving a lot, you would want to look at that particular one to see if you're interested in it. So you see that this one here, they have the star there, meaning how many people have reviewed it. So you can look and see based on what is being shown to you. Let's, let's look and see what, oops, this wants us to sign in. Some of them wanted to create an account. You can just create an account for free by signing in with Google, but you can use those different areas to choose and decide based on reviews that persons have given. So is there any free AI image tool other than Midjourney? I Well, we gave you a whole host of tools to look through. So look through and see which ones give you free elements. Note that most of them are not going to be completely free. They are not going to be completely free. So you will have limitations with some of the things if you're not investing in one of the packages. So Valerie, you're asking, what are AI agents? Where did you see that? Not sure where you saw it. And what I like about Toolify here, Toolify is showing us some AI Chrome extensions. And you know, we've had past learning tube sessions when we've talked about Chrome extensions. So this is actually, they've created a Chrome extension area. So I think that's quite nice. There's a GPT chat extension, all these different things. There are so many goodies that you can look through. So you would explore in that way and make your decisions based on what you see other people put. All right. So we talked about the goal. You need to look through and use the various filters that are available to you, the different categories that you can search through. And trust me, those are going to help you to narrow and prevent overwhelm. Now, guess what? 
Now, after you do all of that, what are you going to do? So remember, we talked about that you're going to have several options that you're going to see when you're doing your search. So obviously, guys, I can't spend the session on doing the search, but you know you're going to go through with the filters and you're searching in category based on what you're interested in. And then here now, you're going to identify. So as you explore, make a note of the AI solutions that seem most promising for your requirements. So in Denise's in Denise's case, she's going to look for some design tools. And based on the design tools that she's seen, she's going to make a list of the ones that she's more interested in. Yes, the replay will be posted in the group, sent via email, as well as posted on our YouTube channel. So for those who may not be aware, there are bookmarks that are available on certain browsers. Now, not all of us are using book the bookmark feature, but it does exist. Nowadays, there are different ways that you can make a note of various websites. You don't need to use the bookmark feature, but you can. Who uses bookmarks here? Give me a B. Does anybody even know that there's a bookmark feature? Have you ever used it? Have you used the bookmark feature? A lot of people have not used this feature anymore because there are so many other alternatives, but the bookmark feature is definitely a feature that needs to still stay out there. All right, so I see someone is answering about the AI agents. Thanks for that. And you say, can you use, you use folders as well? All right, so with Google Chrome, this is the bookmark icon. As you see, it says bookmark this tab, so it's represented by a star. The reason I said with Google Chrome, as in the browser, is that different browser have their bookmarks in different areas and represented by a different symbol. So when I click this, it tells me that it's going to bookmark it, and I say done. And to see all my bookmarks, I'm going to just come to this, these three dots here. Whether they're vertical or horizontal, they represent the same thing. They give you options. Click it, and here it shows bookmarks and lists. So you see I have a whole lot of bookmarks bookmarked right here. So you don't want to have as many as me, but yeah, you don't want to... Because right now, to find the one that I actually did bookmark, I have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, right? So there, there that's an option if you choose to do so. But <laughs> I see Kenya laughing at me. But you see that it's an option. And it, it can definitely save time when you want to go back. But most of us, we just make a note of the website link in a spreadsheet and such to be able to find this, the things that we want. And yes, you can put your bookmarks in a folder on the toolbar. I just have not organized mine in any way, shape, or form. So Linda, you're saying, what is the, what is the best software to create 30 plus posts for a business so I can schedule them at least once a month? Well, you need to check out the bulk create feature in Canva. It's available in Canva Pro. Quick way to create social media posts in bulk. And to schedule them, you can look into one of these AI tool directories to find a scheduling tool that works for you. We've talked about Publer in different learning tube sessions. So you can check that one on one out. P U B L E R. All right. What is the AI detector? Usually, AI detector, you're asking what is an AI detector, James? Or you're asking what is that based on something you've seen on the screen? Let me know. All right. So how do you group your window tabs? I see you have grouping there. All right. So Jeff, I have some group tabs here. Yes, I do. So all right. Let me deviate and tell you about that. So with Google Chrome, you're able to create groups of tabs and such. And what you can do with that is that if you have certain websites that you want to keep going to continuously, and even though you close your browser, you want to be able to go back to the, the tabs without having to recreate it, they now allow you to save your tabs, all right? They allow you to save your tabs. So let me just show you that quickly. So remember that these are the AI tools that I looked at. Let me close this one right here. Close, all right, let's close this. All right, so these are the AI tools that I was looking on. So if I want to put some of these in a group, I can right click and I can say add tab to group. And then I'm going to go to new group and I'm going to call these AI tool directories. This is just for the person who asked me about that. 
AI tool directories, and I'm going to click this. When I turn on this button, it will save the group. So it will make sure that that tab is always going to be there when I close my browser. So I'm going to press the Enter button. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to put all of the tabs that I want in this particular group in here. So right now, this one is in there. How do I know? Because the orange line is below it. So if I want this one in there, I drag it in, drag it in, drag it in. And do I have another one? Yes. Drag that in. Uh, drag that in. So right now, AI tool directories, or oh, sorry, I have spelled it wrong. You know, that's supposed to be directors. Directories. It has one, two, three, four, five, six tabs in there. So when I cl cl click on it, it will minimize the tabs. And then when I open it, it will expand them. So I like that for organization purposes. All right. And the great thing about it is that when I close my browser, when I reopen it, these tools, these tabs, sorry, will always be here. So I don't have to look for them again, of course, unless I close them, as in close the tab itself. So I have some tabs that I need to reuse. So I have them over here. You can choose the colors that you want as well. So I find that a nifty way to do that. And I've done a session on that before, talking about features that you have in the Google Chrome browser. All right, so I saw a lot of questions coming in before. So let me just go back to see what I missed. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. Uh, James, not sure what you were saying there about Toolify, the category. Let's see, let's see. Okay, Deidreon found that training that I did where that's concerned. Thank you for demonstrating. I'm a visual learner and this helped me more than you know. Yes, I believe in showing more than telling. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, so the whole point of this session, as we said, overwhelm is something that will be there once you have too many choices. And you have to find ways and means to go through the content that you have in a way that's organized and makes sense and can help to reduce the overwhelm. You're not gonna cut out overwhelm completely, but if you have some sort of organization, it does help you. So now I, I'm right here on chat GPT, which is definitely uh, an AI tool that can help you as well with the choices that you have to make. So let me show you how you can use chat GPT to help you. Now remember that those websites that we looked at a while ago, you can actually use ChatGPT to help you to decide which one of those websites it thinks is the best. Did you know that? So let me show you what you can do with that. All right, so let me just find my prompt so I can show you what to do. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to help me with comparison. So obviously me looking through all of the websites that are out there, I'm not going to be able to look through all of them quickly enough to be able to make a comparison. So I can, I can ask ChatGPT this. I say, compare the content of the following websites and let me know which one you think is the best organized when it comes to its AI tools. So we saw that we had quite a number of AI tools. Remember, I showed you six of them. And those six AI tool directories that we had, we're asking ChatGPT, which one do you think is the best one when it comes to organization, right? Which one do you think is the best when it comes to organizations? That's what I'm going to ask ChatGPT now. All right, so Jeff said he had to go. Bye, Jeff. Is there a learning tube session on how to use Loom to record video for customers? We should have something like that. So you can look at the replay page or go to the learningtube.com. And then we have the replay page, at the bottom right here, replay page. And you can look on all the past sessions that we've had. I'm not sure if Deidreon had shared that. Yes, she did. Thank you, Deidreon. All right. So Nilda is saying, I've been asked to do a webinar on AI tools. Which do you recommend to demonstrate? Do you recommend sharing these tool directories with clients? Well, you definitely don't want the client to be overwhelmed. <laughs> so you don't necessarily want to show them every single thing that's out there because you know that some of these AI tool directories, they have thousands, like 75,000, 100,000 tools. So I wouldn't necessarily say to show a client these particular websites because they're going, oh my God, there's so many out there. 
but you want to show them tools that you definitely have used and find are easy to use, user-friendly, not difficult to learn and such. So with your testing, let's say now you have used these AI tool directories and you're looking to show them tools in design and tools for creating presentations, tools for content creation, the varying tool categories that you know are popular ones that people would be interested in for the particular business niche that you're presenting on. And then you know, test out the different tools and see based on your checklist, which ones are easy to use and which ones won't overwhelm them. Because a lot of people are not used to using technology and you don't want them to feel like, oh my gosh, it's impossible. This, this is gonna make my life more complicated than making it easier. But you know that you have the common ones out there like Gamma for presentation and such. And, we, and chat GPT alone can do so many of the things that businesses need. So with your trial, you can make those decisions with which ones are the best ones. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna show you how you can use ChatGPT to decide out of the AI tool directories, which ones are for organization. So I'm gonna go back to my tab right here. Let me see which ones I had in here. So I had Futurepedia, so I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna list them to let them tell me which ones they think are the best ones. So Instead of me going through and trying to figure out like, which one, I don't have the time to go through all of them. So I'm listing some of them. So let me just, I want to list more than one so that you see that it is helpful when it comes to that. So I'm just making sure I have the right URL, not extension of the page. So let me go back to chat GPT. So the prompt I put, let me put the prompt there in the chat as well. Compare the content of the following websites and let me know which ones you think are best organized when it comes to its AI listing. That's a prompt I'm giving to chat GPT. All right. So I have two so far. Let me list the other one. We have future tools. Did I put that one? Let me just double check. Future tools. I put that one already. We have Toolify. We have open tools. I think three is enough. Oh, we had the AI tool directory. So let me just drop there. Then we have the AI tool directory. Let's drop that one in there too. Let's see what ChatGPT comes up with, with helping us to find. So ChatGPT, I wanted to compare the content of the following websites that and, and tell me which one is best organized because obviously you want to go through something that's organized and will help you, all right? So I'm going to run that through. Yes, I'm using the paid version, but I'm using the 4.0, the latest version, which is available in the free version as well. So I'm using an option that's available to anyone using the free version too. All right, Gigi, you're welcome. All right, so we see it telling us quite easy, like how fast did it do that? How fast would I be able to go through these three websites and look at this? So it says Toolify. Organization tools are listed in a clear, organized format, and the site includes sections for the latest featured and popular tools. With each tool entry providing concise descriptions and relevant links, navigation user friendly with a well structured sidebar for quick access to categories. Open tools tools are organized by function such as productivity, design, and you see what it's telling us. And it's listing all these things. Well, guess what it does? It says, considering the clarity, comprehensiveness, and ease of navigation, Toolify appears to be the best organized, offering a balanced and user-friendly experience and detailed categorizations and concise tool description. What do you think about that? Like it told us which one it thought was the best one. So if you wanted to go through and choose one or you weren't sure, let's say you, you found somewhere that showed you so many different AI tools that were available. And you said, oh my gosh, I have so many to go through. Which one would I choose? AI chose it for you. ChatGP told you, Toolify. And when you look at Toolify, look at it. Do you agree with what it summed up when you compare it to the others? You can look for yourself and see if you agree with ChatGPT and its analysis. So ChatGPT is a great way to help you sort through what you want as well. You could also ask it to create or look through and find the certain 
types of niche that you're interested in. So who was interested in design again? I think it was Denise that was interested in design. So suppose you wanted to have a list of the design tools that each of those websites had. You could ask ChatGPT for that too. So you could ask it to create a table or a spreadsheet or whatever. You could ask it to create a table. I'm going to ask it to create a spreadsheet. All right, so let me show you what that prompt can look like. All right, so let's go back here. All right, so I can ask it to create a spreadsheet that contains a list of AI tools for creating images. To create a spreadsheet contains AI to contains AI tools for creating images that are listed on each of the websites listed above. All right, that are listed on each of the websites listed above. And then I'm going to tell it that it's to remove duplicates. All right, so let's see what it does with that. So basically, we wanted to go through. Is there an alternative to Gamma? A different alter Canva can do what Gamma does as well. Canva does have a presentation aspect that you can get as well. Let me see. Let me see what it did. So I reviewed AI tools and images for all of these. And they're telling us that these are the ones that it came up with. But guess what I didn't do? I wanted to include the links. I can tell it that redo and include the links for me to be able to access the website. Nilda, there's one that is very popular as well. Beautiful, what is it again? Beautiful, I think it's beautiful slides or beautiful AI. Yeah, I don't remember the name of it. When it comes to in introducing generative AI presentation software for the workplace, beautiful.ai. I know that's that's a popular one too. That you can try and see. I haven't tested it out, but I will usually list it as one of thank you. Beautiful.ai. All right. So I'm unable to save the chat. Will you share the yes, we're gonna share these links with the replay. All right. Let's go back to chat GPT. Where are you chat GPT? All right, so I told it to redo and it redid it and gave me the links, all right? So I can actually click on these links. So if I wanted to try this one, Starry AI, I click on it and it's taking me here. It didn't do the spreadsheet like I wanted, but it did a good enough job for me to be able to get what I needed. Maybe the prompt, I didn't write it as I needed to, but you see, I was able to, create some image tools without looking through myself. So it says Futurepedia, these were some that it listed and so on. Canva, text the image and all these things listed right here. All right, let's see, let's see. All right, so the whole point is use AI to help you when you're going through to help reduce the overwhelm. You have tools that are there that will help you to sort through, you're not expected to look through every single tool that is out there. Use the filters, use your niche search. And of course, you can use ChatGPT to help you with some of what you're doing as well. Now you notice that, let's go back here. It actually told you that you're going to also organize on a spreadsheet to keep track of the details and features of the options. Remember, we talked about the bookmark. And you can also organize it in a spreadsheet. Now, I have a Chrome extension that I use to easily get access to Google Sheets, which is what I use for my spreadsheet. So this Chrome extension is called Google Docs Quick Create. So when I click on it, I can easily choose what I want. So I want a new spreadsheet. So in the spreadsheet, I can organize it any way I want to. So if you want to do this manually, you're able to do it. So you could put the name of the tool. So you could say name of tool. Let's say this particular spreadsheet, you're going to have all of the tools. So let's say right here for this first sheet, double click on it. I'm going to say design tools, right? I can add a new sheet, add, click in the plus, and I can say productivity tool, no, content creation tools. 
They can have different sheets for the varying tools. You're able to change the color of the sheet. I like changing the colors because it makes it interesting. Purple is one of my favorite colors, so I can change it to that and I can have... So you notice that there's a line here that shows you that this one is green, this one is purple. So you can organize it that way. You can also use a checkbox if you want to be able to check off certain options. So suppose you're looking based on pricing. So you can say, is, is it free? Premium, I soon tell you the name of it to the extension. Premium, or is it paid? You can have check boxes, so you can just select the part that you want. Click insert and go to check box, so you can see, click, okay, that one is free. So if, let's say the tool was a journey. We know that that's not free, but you get what I'm saying. You could go through and check off that way, different ways that you can do that. All right, so the name of the extension is Google Docs Quick Create. If you remember that extension class that I did to get Chrome extensions, you look for the Chrome store. So just type in the search Chrome web store and you can jump in there. And you can search based on the extension. So you can search for Google Docs. What was it? Google Docs. Create and find the exact extension and install it. So here it is Google Docs. Create. You click on it. Mine says install because it's already installed. But you click on it. And you would add to Chrome. This will say add to Chrome if you want to be able to add it. So it's called, I love extensions because they add more functionality to your browser and it makes you more efficient with what you have to do. So based on your needs, you would choose extensions that link to that, all right? And Dejan is on the ball finding all the training that have been done on these things. Thank you so much, Deja. She's dropping this training like, she's doing this on the fly, right? Because I didn't plan to do this while I'm presenting, people are asking things. So she's doing this right in the moment, real time. So give Deja a hand. Thank you, Deja, for just dropping those links as well as finding past training so that you're able to check it out if you want to. All right. So Anna Marie, you're saying all this information reminds me of how I feel in Costco. <laughs> You're welcome. Janet, uh, you say that the Google Google Doc extension will be a game changer. I love it. I use Google Docs all the time, as in the Google Suite. So I want to be able to just jump into anyone I want at any time without having to go through the Google Drive itself. So it's great to be able to have different options to allow you to do what you need to do. All right. Okay, guys. So basically, that's it. With last slide, it's just going to be reiterating some of the things that we're talking about you want to avoid burnout other feedback ask other persons just like what nilda was doing asking persons about different tools to do varying things get opinions because that also too helps reduce your overwhelm and reduce your time in looking yourself if you're not able to look yourself or just to get a second opinion to know what you want to try out Refine your search because you won't get what you want the first time around. Remember, Kenya was asking about event titles. I was saying, oh my God, what am I going to search for? And we thought about name generators. So you could even say event name generators or different things like that. So try different search keywords because you never know the right tools that you will be able to find. And you also want to make sure that you are continuously evaluating your criteria. You want to change up how you're doing certain things. Don't treat your search as a one-time event. Regularly revisit, redefine your criteria as your needs evolve. You have to stay up to date when it comes to AI trends. While I'm doing this presentation, most of these AI tools are outdated, <laughs> are getting outdated, right? I'm just telling you that AI is changing constantly, every millisecond. So you have to be on the ball because changes occur. And you always want to make sure that you test you evaluate, use these free trials so that you are making sure that these tools are user-friendly and you know exactly what you want to get done. All right, so looking on the last point that Nilda is saying that Gamma, let me go there, you're using Gamma. Where is Nilda? Using Gamma, whoops, whoops, it's scrolling Nilda, let me see. Uh, but it's not giving you what you want. But you know that, I think Alicia did do a session in 
I think you're in the AI experts club, not sure, but you know that you can put the content into Gamma that you want. You don't have to just use the AI generated part. Are you putting in your own content? So in other words, you can go back and forth with chat GPT and get the content that you want and then plug that same content into Gamma for it to basically create the slides for you. All right, so you're putting in the content, but you're just not getting what you want. Well, I think you should continue tweaking tweaking it and seeing what's going on. So you're using Gamma for the presentation I need to do. Oh, I'm reading the wrong part. So yes, you're putting in the content. So when you say you're not getting what you want, what, ex what exactly are you looking for to get as your results? Want the presentation to be more polished. Okay, I get you, I get you, I get you. So that just sounds like you need to just go through. Don't overthink it, Nilda, trust me, overthinking things. People are not even looking on what we think they're looking on. They're going to be so overwhelmed by all these tools that you're showing them. They're, you're going to be surprised that they're not... Look, I know what you're talking about, looking polished and so on, but it's going to be a great presentation and they're, don't overthink it. It sounds like you're overthinking things a little bit, but just tweak it as much as possible. We know that you're in a lot of our programs, so you can even share it and get feedback on the presentation itself, how it looks. So Crystal is giving you some advice. She said she found a way to do the presentation with ChatGPT and PowerPoint, and it works like a charm. So connect with Crystal. Crystal, do you want to leave any information for her to get in touch with you? If you're able to put that, I love it helps each other so that they are achieve success their success ready for all of us so we don't need to withhold any information all right so guys thank you for joining us live for this learning tube session nilda make sure that you see let me actually send it to you in case you don't see it in the chat let me send it to you personally so this is the email chris crystal center email nilda confirm that you see it so that you can connect with crystal and she can tell you some of the information all right thank you guys and remember, don't feel overwhelmed. There are ways and means to avoid some of this overwhelm. Overwhelm is a natural thing, but just don't make it stall you, stop you, overpower you so that you're not able to move forward. Remember that the session is recorded and it will be posted in the Facebook group within 24 hours of this session. And it's also going to be sent via email. And we also put it on our Learning Tube YouTube page and no yes and our replay page as well so thank you so much for joining us live thanks adrian and everyone have a great rest of the day bye guys